Hey all, this is Urst. Welcome back to the Battle for the Nile. So this is gonna be a little weird kind of playthrough thing, uh, mainly because I managed to screw up my recording and uh, we don't have an audio track to this. So I'm gonna be talking after the fact and giving you a post hoc commentary on what the hell I'm doing. And here we're saying we're about to try and get compass from the theft from Ramsey. So we're not gonna try to research that off the bat. But we are still at war, so we need to end that at some point soon. So let's negotiate the peace. And he's probably gonna give us flat peace at this point, because you know what? One city is not gonna make him uh, afraid of us. Might as well take that deal while we can. Yeah. Could accept the embassy, but he's kind of an ass. We'll see if he goes for that. That'd be nice. And there we go. Okie doke. And now he's gonna start a phase of a little bit of uh, consolidation and refitting on where we're gonna research. Probably workshops are first since we want to get those production buildings up and we want to see if we can steal compass off of Ramses in 10 turns. We can always be researching other stuff in the interim. And we are about to get into the Enlightenment era. This is where all the new techs kind of start. That's going to be a lot of fun. Upgraded recon units, galleons, which upgrades the Karak, which is the Trireme upgrade. So this is now the melee ship run. Uh, scouts, of course, always really good to have still, I think, in late game, even as exploration units. That's the Mercenary Army guy. It's not quite a new unit, but then we got line infantry, skirmishers, all upgrades to basic infantry units. The field gun is a cannon upgrade, which is bigger on ranged combat and slower, uh, about the same range actually. So you know, just a flat upgrade overall. And wow, it upgrades to artillery with 10 gold. It must make the cannon upgrade hella expensive actually. 140 to field gun. That's not cheap. That's not cheap at all. But uh, you know, at least it's always giving us basically four more ranged combat and I think, yeah, three more defense. So not a lot, especially because building strength is going to go up in like massively in the time period that we get field guns, but yeah, what can you do? And industrialization is all the way up here by industrial era, which means that um, ideologies are going to be put off and other policies are going to have a little more time for us to pick them up. So that's not too bad. There's a lot of really neat stuff in the Enlightenment era. As you can see, coal is early. We have clothing mills. Sovereignty gives us two new world wonders, Versailles and Tupkapi Palace, and the Summer Palace, which gives us a national wonder once we build all those manors right there. So, you know, a lot of really cool options, which I can't wait to get into. So, at this point, we're like, you know what, let's just keep going while we research them workshops. And here, it looks like we're hitting more or less the edges of what we can explore with the Garamantes. So, we're probably going to see if we can get open borders with those fellers uh, one, so the, one of these days. Uh, and this is what I'm trying to figure out what the hell I was thinking about. I was probably figuring out what the hell the workers were doing in the interim here. And I'm really, really sad, actually, that I managed to screw that up. I was doing some stuff on my computer, managed to unplug the USB, and the way we, uh, or the way I have it set up is that the USB is keyed to my uh, audio codec so I can record, and when I plug in a different place, the recording software defaults to, like, a bad thing, which doesn't actually record my audio, which is why we have this problem. But for now, we're going to get the profit to convert that city stage we were talking about, then head him back to convert Kadesh so we can buy the pagoda in its place. Um, beyond that, though, our workers need to keep working, and we're going to keep getting our melee units back to our city so we can get more money from our trade routes. That's the next big thing, is getting our trade routes back up to where they need to be, because our gold at two per turn at this stage of the game is not acceptable. We need a lot more money, and uh, we're going to have to start leveraging some strategics to do that, I think. Uh, we have 20 iron right now, which is nice, which is nice, but... Uh, we are going to need that for ships eventually, though honestly we may need to sell that first just to get the money and then put it off for ships later. I'm not entirely certain how we're going to go with that, depending how desperate we get for cash. Let's leave it at that, shall we? But so far we're staffed in universities everywhere, save Adindan, um, which is still growing. Which, you know, we're going to wait till we hit about 10 pop and then we're going to staff the university. That's probably the best, best idea we have on that. For now, though, workers are going to keep improving the east side and whatever tiles pop up instead. We're going to shift them all over east so we can do good work. Good work indeed. All right, and you, sir, yeah, what were you going to do with this feller? I think we're just going to leave him up around Kerman and Dindan to see if something comes out. Yay, my thought processes are more or less the same. This is good. I'm glad I'm considering the game, not looking at the single. Man, what the hell was I doing? That was dumb as hell. I'm actually doing okay on that. But here we're double checking to make sure we're actually moving to the cities that we're intending to move to. Uh, one to Kerma, one to uh, Faras, and one to Dongola, so we can get those trade routes giving us one extra gold. Or more gold, I think, per luxury, actually, from our unique Nobatian Swordsman ability. And we're cranking out the last two, so we'll have a total of eight, which will be nice. And that's a pretty good land army. Um, after we took those losses in the war with Egypt, we need to replace our dudes just a little bit to make sure we are all well and solid. Yeah. 
That's pretty much what we're doing. Yeah, we're basically checking to make sure they're going to the right place. And you are going to go to Dongrela, my friend. But we may be changing that next turn, given that two more about to pop out and still up in Kassiri Budim. But that's a story for the next turn. Did I just spoil the next turn by accident? Nah, it's not really much of a spoilers. I guess you can yell at me for that one. I suppose. But yeah, part of the thing is we do need to steal compass from Ramses. Because our triremes are actually quite um, outdated by this point. And if anyone dows us, we're not going to have a naval force that can actually stand up to them. And it's kind of scary. We are catching up on tech, but we're still a little behind because we dove into the acoustics, uh, renaissance era kind of side of the game. And our military is a little slow by comparison. We don't have that many friends, honestly. So they're all kind of, I don't know, they're kind of angry at us. Uh, and we got a great scientist, which is fantastic. So we're going to have to probably drop him somewhere useful. Again, we're trying to see if we're going to drop him on a hill or food. And I think long-term food is better. So we're going to probably drop him on a hill and then staff him with one of the university guys, which is exactly what we're going to do. God, I love it when I actually feel like, you know, I'm consistently doing the right strategies here, so that's nice. Um, okay, and we have a new Nabatian Swordsman, so this is going to change our staffing a little bit, but again, we still want to get the guys into Kerma. We still want to get the guys into Faras and get someone into Dongola. That guy's not going to be really the main choice here. Yeah, exactly right. I want to get that guy to Dongola. Get the improvement on the trade routes where the rest of y'all can sit in the front line a little. Uh, and we're probably going to switch that out exactly because when a naval fight is on hand, we likely are going to need a uh, composite bow rather than a melee unit. That's not going to really help us that much. We're shifting around a little bit, getting the general in the city so nothing untoward happens to him. And it looks like Cleo's forces really are trying to massacre uh, Ramsey just a little bit. And that's always nice. It keeps him off our back. Um, and we managed to get a city off him for that. So good job, Cleo, distracting him while we consolidate our gains. And now uh, the other thing is, you know, Ramsey's is a problem. He's got like 11 cities and he's growing every, every turn. The other scary, scary, scary as hell thing, though, is the Garamantes. They're actually growing like crazy and they're better on tech. So... You know, we have to watch out for them, and I don't think I noticed that right off the bat. I got that a little later, and uh, after that, man, stuff got scary. And here we got the tavern, um, which is another happiness building, which got slotted into, I think, the Lyman era mod, I do believe. So we do really want to get our people drunk and happy, so I think that's going to be another priority. Here we're trying to figure out where that is in tech, and it's not in acoustics. It's actually medieval era tech, which makes sense in machinery. That makes less sense, but at least it's medieval era, so people knew how to get hammered then. All good. People knew how to get hammered like in the ancient era though, so I mean, tavern, really? That's not like a new thing. But I guess in this game, you gotta slot it somewhere, might as well be the medieval era. Alrighty, we're making a lot of money, and when we actually annex, that's gonna absolutely collapse our economy. Given that we're making five gold a turn, and mostly dependent, actually, on that Cerro de Potosi tile. And once that city grows, we're gonna be working that tile whole hog. Until that time, though, we need to sit back, relax, and have a pipe and a crepe, a smoke and a pancake, and just enjoy the fact that we actually have a city there, able to give us ten gold from one tile. It'll be good in the future, but for now, we need to focus on growing that city a little bit once we annex it. And here we're trying to decide where to put the guilds, and again, I think this is the best city for the guild. If we try to push our capital any harder, it's going to be tough to uh, keep the growth up since we didn't take all the tradition, um, I guess, finishing policies that I like. The extra growth, the happiness and stuff, which we'll probably go back to once we fill out the first three that I really like in rationalism. I think that's still the priority. The next three policies are going to go into rationalism. If we have time before the industrial era, which we may at this rate, uh, to dip back into tradition, we may do that. But here we're trying to see where we're going to explore next. Uh, we got a lot of stuff. We have some I Love the King days, thanks to the Lapis we traded for. I think that was a Nubian trade, if I remember correctly, from last time. And again, our economy is not doing as well, so we're going to trade some more horses and good things like that to make our economy feel better about itself. And here we're probably going to keep the Magistrate. There's not a lot of production, not a lot of science, especially when split amongst our cities like the way it is. So we're going to just sit back a little bit and not do that and save the uh, Magistrate for potential maybe tax reforms in case we suddenly realize, oh my god, we really, really need money. Uh, and then, you know, let's say there's a war coming, we need to upgrade our military units. It's probably the best strategy at this point to make sure we're still strong. Uh, so Cleo's going to help us out with some cash, and who's doing pretty well this game, which I'm pretty happy about. And so we're going to keep selling horses in bundles of two for three GPT, which is equivalent to about 150 gold. Um, and there's me mistyping two. Thank you. <laughs> Past self, stop failing. Uh, 150, perfect. We're going to basically suck as much gold out of her as possible. That's not supposed to be an innuendo. She does have a lot on her cape, I guess. And that's not GPT, you idiot. Go back to your flat gold. There you go. I love berating my old self. It kind of 
kind of makes me realize that I can always improve. I already know I always can improve. There's always always things I could have done better on these episodes, but it's always really funny to see yourself and mistyping again because ha ha. All right, there we go. It's like commentary on someone else's LP. This is hilarious. I don't know. This is a weird feeling doing post hoc civ commentary. I guess with uh, XCOM, it's a little easier because the goal is pretty clear, you know, kill the aliens or escort the VIP or, or what have you. Here is a lot of directions you can go with every turn. So we're going to upgrade our um, composites first, mainly because that's going to be our be-all, end-all against the ships coming into our territory. And we'd rather have those up first rather than anything else, just so we can actually defend it in case... Because we're not getting any ships over to Kadesh. That's the biggest problem. Um, we are not going to get open borders from Ramses or whatever the hell he's calling himself these days, Rams us, maybe. Um, and he, if he goes after us, we're going to be hard-pressed to defend Kadesh. That's the problem. So either we hit him hard, get some cities cleared out, basically Heliopolis out of the way, so we can actually move our um, fleets in or not. And here I'm seeing that's the only one-tile river that we've got. So those two hills that we're making farms on right now and Kadesh are the only fresh water available there. So we're going to need to get food in some way, shape, or form soon. For now, though... Not so good. Here we're trying to find a way over to Kabul to get them as our astronism so we get a little more rep with them and keep that culture flowing. Because that's next. In order to get our science back up, we do need to go deeper into um, rationalism. We must go deeper. And for that, we need more culture. So social policy is going to help us out on the uh, science route as well. Not as directly as science, obviously, but every little bit helps. And rationalism is, you know, key, key social policy for that. And you are still waiting for the upgrade so you can hang for a little bit. Alrighty, and it looks like that's it for now, and we're almost there. Uh, no, we're not quite there yet. Here we're taking a look. The Nubians are pretty strong. There may be a foil to the Garamantes as their territory ambitions grow, and there's really no real city states we want at the moment to try and get massive rep over. As long as we're friends with a couple, uh, we'll get that culture flowing in good, and we can probably make the best of that situation, if need be. And there's a cow lowing in the distance. The cattle is lowing. What, what does that even mean? That's from that's from some kind of Christmas carol, I think. Maybe, um... Actually, I'm not sure what, which Christmas carol that's from. Something about baby Jesus laying down his sweet head. Um, but there's a cattle lowing in the background. And I'm not sure what that means. I think he's... I don't think the cow is low riding, per se. But uh, that may be suspect. Maybe I'm just projecting at this point. But I guess that cow was actually lowing at that point. So maybe he's mooing in some really, really, like, low Isaac Hayes kind of way. I don't know. I'm digressing now because I don't know what the hell to talk about at this point. I'm kidding. No, we're just reprioritizing the taverns a little bit to make sure we have some happiness. And here's where I'm going. Damn, that war is really afoot. And we probably should get open borders with the Garamantes while well, they still like us. Um, so we can explore their lands and then get the hell out. And we're probably going to pay him to iron for that, honestly. And I'm realizing he has a lot. A lot. A lot of unique luxuries. Which I may be forced to acquire from him to keep my happiness afloat at some point. But for now, though, we're going to hold off on it. And focus are getting a military back up to snuff. And now finally, we're going to get here and start improving our trade routes, um, money-making capabilities. Yeah, you go to Faras. You go to Dongola. Beautiful. And this is now saving our money from both from increasing our trade route yields and from oligarchy, which we have. So that's really, really helping us out as far as unit maintenance is concerned. And again, 10 gold to turn is not bad. It's not awesome. I could be, I mean, I should be making a lot more. But again, we need to get our trade routes up. We're getting there, though. We're improving slowly. And our infrastructure is actually quite extensive, such that we need to pay a lot for buildings and maintenance. And our populations aren't really cranking out the gold we need quite yet. Though, like I said, once we get some decent population in Kadesh, um, basically once we work those three tiles next to the city, the two worker tiles right now, and the one that Nobaki Swordsman is standing on, the farm, then I think I'm going to transfer the fourth population to work on Cerro de Batosi, and then we'll figure out whatever is going to happen after that. But for now, though, Kadesh is, uh, is going to be a work in progress. Let's put it that way. Just a little bit of work in progress. But first, we're going to drop the academy here. René Descartes will found his academy next to the beautiful mountains of Dongola, or Dongola. And we're going to get a little more science out of that. That's three and three scientist points. So we're losing three scientist points, but gaining two production and eight science. So... You know, plus five science, plus two production is probably a good price to pay, and we're about to get a new citizen anyway. So we'll be able to restaff that university uh, forthwith, post-haste, and all those awesome antiquated descriptors we love to use so very, very much. And again, we're checking to make sure all the trade-off cities are staffed, which indeed it looks they are. 
So we might as well start staffing people on the borders to watch for barbarians. Though these continents starting to get a little more settled out now, so barbarians are going to be less and less of an issue. Uh, there may be some still in the south, pretty much, because no one wants to settle in tundra and crappy terrain. But, you know, they also want my religion, which may be a little harder to, uh, to accomplish. But we're already heading to Kabul again. The distance is considerable. But, you know, what else are we going to use that prophet for? We already started spreading the religion a little bit. Um, or rather, that's what we're going to designate him to. So once we spread to Kabul, we might as well use him for other city-states and other cities that need to hear the good word of Zoroastrianism. Which we will. They will hear the good word of Zoro. Or, wait, hold on. Historically, that's Asura Mazda, isn't it? I don't know, I'm trying to remember my, uh, ancient era religions, but I think that's right overall. Alright, anyway, I could be wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's the... Asura Mazda is the overall deity of that particular belief system. Alright, uh, again, we're not gonna do this too slow. Need more mans for the artist guild, so we're gonna work as much food as we possibly can. So we can staff that as soon as it pops up and get more culture out of this. And I'm gonna prioritize the workshop over the, uh, tavern for now. And the forge, likely too. We may work that iron at some point in the future when we have more food, so that's probably a good idea. Cenobium, probably last. Honestly, not a priority. So, meh. It'll be okay. Now, research. Now we've got that. Um, this is where it kind of took a little bit of a situation to gather in how much our spy is researching, or stealing. And Cubbas will be in four, so it's worth it to wait for that. But with the new Enlightenment era text, when we normally just went straight up to industrialization, that would be the next step. Now it's a whole nother era later. So decisions on tech aren't as easy, really. We could go to printing press, as I was seeing there. No one has founded the National or the World Congress yet. So we might be able to go that way. And uh, the next science building is actually at humanism, believe it or not. That's the next money building, the way house that upgrades the bank. So I guess two money buildings away, technically. The Curious here is a middling um, upgrade from the knight to the cavalry. Something we really needed, actually. 20 to 28 to 34. Because before it went from 20 to 34, and there's too much of a gap, I think. But the academy at humanism, and at the academy and the salon are actually exclusive, believe it or not. They, um, you can pick one or the other, and I'm probably going to lean towards science this game, just because it seems like we could really need that against vastly superior, um, superiorly sized empires, which seems to be the case. I mean, we have seven cities. We're no slouch, but I mean, we're looking at double digits in nearly everyone else that isn't getting killed, because people are absorbing um, neighboring empires with a rate that's quite disturbing to me. So really, we're trying to figure out how to get there, and this is pretty cool. We get plus two science. Um, from religious buildings, which is really, really nice. Which I like a lot. Um, so that's another nice world one we want to go to. So that's something to think about. But we got to really also keep our military strong, lest we get invaded. So that's really part of the weighing process I'm trying to do here. And I'm trying to think, okay, science is going to be important. We got to catch up on tech. We have a lot of scary neighbors. So we should probably also maybe go for observatories. So I remember correctly, we have a lot of observatory-capable cities. And that is Kerma 1. Uh, definitely, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's right, old me, that's definitely one. Kaser Ibrim and Soleb. So, three observatory cities, that's huge. We're gonna use that to our advantage, so I'm like, yes, observatories! Let's do that! And we get a Caravel Exploration Unit, which no longer upgrades from the Trireme, by the way. This is a whole different line now. However, however, the problem is that that's gonna force me to research Compass, which I want to steal from Egypt and not research myself. So, here is when I go, derp, 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 don't do that, and I go, no, we should research steel instead. Let's research steel instead. That's the better choice. Yeah. Because we want a steel compass. Yeah. There we go. Okay, very cool. So that was the real decision with the science. And it has changed the research direction a lot, having an extra era in there. Because some things you can depend on to bounce you around, really you can't depend on that anymore. So it's going to get interesting, kind of, how once we get into the Enlightenment era, how we're going to push it. But the scout's going to keep exploring Garamantian territory. Um, if this guy keeps expanding, I'm, I get the sinking feeling we're the next target. So, I mean, that's not awesome. So we got to prepare for that, and the best way to prepare is actually getting better science up. That's really, that's really the thing. And again, here's, I'm thinking the turn is going over, but oh no, Yunani's orders! Because apparently, that's not annoying as anything. I really wish it didn't happen so much, but anyway. I digress. So we're back up to 14 GPT now, and our happiness is still kind of on the cusp of going unhappy. So I'm glad I'm constantly kicking out coliseums and other things to keep myself afloat. Which may become a priority, actually, in my new city as well, because the um, Circus Maximus is still not built yet, which we really want to get on at some point. And that would be very useful. And looky there, we got ourselves a nasty little pike trying to murder us. 
um, which is now being spawned again from that damn barbarian camp in there, which I do need to clear up at some point. And I'm probably going to bring another archer um, to handle that exactly, as I'm discussing here. Uh, someone who can actually get promotion out of this, so that guy, basically. I want to send him south, so we can go over and clear up the barbarian mess that we seem to be getting ourselves into. But it looks like uh, Ramses' technology hasn't really expanded much beyond uh, Compass, as far as naval techs goes. Here we got it, we're about to say, let's buy a mosque! And then I go, where's the mosque? Why can't I buy a mosque? Because, you derp. It's already got a mosque. I had assumed that um, everything got burned down after like the eight times we exchanged that city the last war that we had. And uh, for some reason, it took me a couple seconds to realize that, hey, it already has a mosque. Ah. All right, so yeah, well, that was a brilliant moment I had. Anyways, so we're going to restaff here a little bit and uh, keep cranking. And again, we're trying to find the best tile to restaff, which should be that one, assuming the farm is anywhere near done, which it is at that very moment, as if I knew. I collapsed my economy from plus 12 to zero, but damn it all, says, says I, let's build a monument and all this other stuff I need. Putting the market off, and we're going to queue up a bunch of little things um, to keep our happiness and production moving. So workshops, water mills, all the above to help us get uh, this city up to snuff, because it's in a great position. <laughs> having the Cerro de Botosi right there. Uh, but that's about it. It doesn't have a lot of food potential. Next to potentially very aggressive neighbors. So, uh, you know, could be a flashpoint for conflict in the very near future. So we're going to have to probably just rely on our ability to keep that thing afloat and really kind of get up to snuff very, very quickly. I may be thinking about sending a production caravan that way once we get our workshops up, but that's going to be a decision for another day. For now... We're just going to have to wait and uh, keep going. And we're still trying to get to Kabul some way. The military's blocking us there. Which is a little frustrating, but that's pretty normal trying to move non-military units around. Pretty much to get a zone controlled and blocked off by nearly everything. And we're trying to find a good trade route here. And Faras Tanubt looks like to be the best. So I go, yay, Faras Tanubt. That seems like a ridiculously long route, but I'm not going to complain. I guess that's possible. And then you'll realize next turn, I realize that that's not actually a ship route. That's actually a land route that we can do. So boohoo on that for me. Uh, but we're going to transfer the ship anyway. <laughs> I was saying, I'm like, really? We can go that far? Okay. That seems odd, but that sounds fair. And then, <laughs> sure enough, that's not going to be able to do it next turn. But you'll realize the moment when that gets through my head. It's kind of funny, actually. Um, you can now be upgraded. That's right. I forgot. We had another composite upgrade. And here, this guy, I'm starting sending to the south uh, for some reason. And then I realized that, wait a minute, that guy can't be upgraded either. I mean, uh, can't get any more promotion barbarians, so... <laughs> Joke's on me, I guess. But I'm still holding off on upgrading that composite for some reason, which I'm not entirely sure why. But, uh, yeah, Cleo is definitely plying the, the sea lanes here. I think she's trying to get at Ramses, and I don't really want to give her open borders quite yet. <clears throat> now they're going after Ramsey City right there, so, you know, he might be going down pretty soon. He's pissed off enough people that he's going to become a liability, I think, for most of the uh, neighbors he's got at the moment. And here we could obviously spend culture on taxes, but I'm still trying to spend culture on social policies. Unfortunately, we're down to minus one gold, mainly because the trade route ended. Here I'm going, where is the nub drought? I know I saw you. And then I go, ah, balls. It's a caravan route. So then I say, okay, what's the next best one? And we're trying to stay away from that side of the world that may absolutely detonate my ability to stay sane. So we're going to be able to sap three signs out of the route to Avarice. Which is the way we're ultimately going to go. Um, it's nine gold. I mean, it's not, you know, the massive Kadesh route we've got from Kadesh to Thines, but it's something. Um, again, I'm, I don't want to risk that conflict quite yet, though I think the next set of rounds, it looks like uh, the Garamond's going to be the next problem I have. So I may actually go ahead and do that at some point. But now with our economy more or less in the positives, uh, we can upgrade that last composite and finally have a fleet of crossbows. I actually haven't seen from anyone else. Um, so I guess we're ahead on archery tech, which is, you know, suitable for a Nubian successor state, right? We are the land of the bow. So there's that. I'm like, well, I wasn't sending you south. I was sending you south. You're going to get promoted from this. What are you doing? You go heal up and don't talk to me. Yeah, pretty much what I said there, more or less. I'm paraphrasing from what I remember, what I allegedly thought I was recording. Ugh. Yeah, this is really, really, really annoying when that happens. But, you know. That's the way it goes sometimes. Sometimes you uh, unplug your computer and try to get an SSD installed, and uh, you forget to check if your settings are right. And then you have to spend another hour voicing over the recordings you already <laughs> recorded over. Oh, such is the life of a YouTube 
quasi personality. I wouldn't even call myself a personality at this point. <laughs> YouTube resident lurker. I don't know. Something along those lines, I guess. I suppose I have a personality of some sort, whether that's a positive thing or a negative thing, it's up to you to decide. Anyways, now I'm digressing in a very unnecessary way, so I'm just gonna keep going. Yes, I'm sure, give me money. <laughs> give me money now! But, uh, yeah, that's more or less. We need to get our economy back up to snuff, and that's the next priority. And here I'm trying to realize why the hell I don't have a free, um, opera house down in Dongola, and I realized that I actually didn't build the opera house in time. And I got the amphitheater instead, which I thought I did when I timed that out. I must have gotten a, um, a King's Ransom of Social Policy at some point, so we're going to have to build that one out manually. But at least we got three free ones, that's pretty nice, and the amphitheater at least was free. So, in the end, we wasted a little bit of production, but overall, I think we, uh, we came out on top. Either way, delaying that one and getting at least three free opera houses out of the deal. There's a bit of queue setting up to make sure the priorities are where they need to be. And we're still keeping an eye on that damn uh, pikeman in the south to see he's not going to go in and pillage our stuff. Which he may. I mean, those barbarians have a nasty habit of deploying when I don't want them to in the water, but yeah. At least they're not spamming barbarian galleys. That would be most inappropriate. And it looks like the war against Cleo is still going on. So we probably don't have much to fear from Ramses at the very moment. And there we go, that pikeman is back there trying to make trouble, so at this point I'm thinking, you know, if once I kill that guy, I'm just gonna have to go after the camp at some point. It looks like Thebes is gonna be uh, a nasty, nasty target. I'm here I'm pretty much hoping that Hatshepsut stays more or less afloat, um, but that probably will not happen at this rate. And here I'm waiting for them to convert. There's so many Islamic missionaries running around, and they're not actually converting my cities. I want you to convert my cities. Like, I want to be able to spend faith on universities and science buildings and stuff. But I can't even do that. I mean, the cities are Zoroastrian um, for the moment. I'm going to get pressured out by Islam later on for sure. And I guess the obscene amount of faith that we're making is going to help later to buy research labs and stuff. But, you know, I really wish I, really wish I had this sooner so I can start um, getting you know, useful things out of it, getting mosques out of it, and all these other really cool faith buildings I can get early before the faith costs really skyrocket. And here we're setting up who's going to be in the better position. That was a rough terrain guy with cover. That's a uh, open terrain guy with cover. So that way we can at least get uh, the positions correct if there is going to be an onslaught at some point. The peace treaty with Ramses is going to run out um, relatively soon. I think maybe less than six-ish turns at this point. So we got to be ready for when he decides to come after us, but eh, you know, minor details. Now they come, the Nubian Islamic missionaries, which refuse to proselytize to Zoroastrian citizens. I gotta say, that's discriminatory and that's racist. Um, they don't like the fact that a successor culture is actually playing the same game they are. They're, <laughs> they're rather exclusionist in that respect, but, yeah, to each his own, I guess. Yeah, we're just trying to get the uh, priorities right here. We'll let the Synovium finish, then go in that way. Uh, and, you know, we're still somewhat afloat on happiness since uh, we couldn't get the Pagoda as planned. However, you know, there's still concerns. we got to start queuing up the taverns where we need to. Uh, circus there is going to be nice and free, though, so we're going to prioritize that one as a happiness building. And again, no new citizens here, really. They just jumped around because the... Uh, the nasty pikeman is going in being a pain in the ass, so we have to deal with him, but we can't because the scout's in the water. Isn't that nice of our neighbors to screw us over like that? It is. It sure is. Sure enough. So, you know, these are the things we contend with. Zinchekra is there. Um, so we're seeing a massive glut of Garamantian cities really just peppering the entire continent, which is very, very scary. And not much we can do about that, honestly. Except just kind of kind of be sad. Kind of really be sad, because he's going to come after us next. We just know it. You can feel it in your bones, really. When the guy's that strong, he's like, you know you're the next target. It's not going to be pretty. And we're going to get these guys up. And we do need to upgrade these guys in the long swords at some point. We are getting towards Steel Tech um, relatively soon. And for that, we're likely going to leverage a lot of our iron. We have 19 excess iron at this point, which we don't necessarily need yet. Frigates are a long way off still, and uh, the Karaks are doing just fine. Here I was worried that the uh, Pikeman will try to go after our ships, but apparently he is content to attack the scout instead. Go figure. And our triremes being skilled as they are, 
are constantly whooping in the water to do work for us. And all barbarians who are currently deployed should be very, very afraid. Once those get upgraded, that'll be an even easier set of kills, but I digress. Uh, we're going to get the tavern up to keep our happiness up and then do the workshop. Here we have the workshop queued already, and we're going to finish the uh, artist guild before we go into that. Uh, but we do need to get the workshops up. This is going to help just get every building up afterwards, produce units better. I mean, workshops are one of those key buildings you really want to make sure to start getting up in your cities as soon as you have the technology, or I mean, within reason, obviously. You shouldn't put everything on hold. Well, sometimes you may want to. But in this case, you know, finish what you're doing and then get those workshops. That's really a priority. And here I realize that Ife and Kabul are at war, which is pretty funny because no one's allied to Ife, but they're still deciding to whoop on Kabul for some reason. It's very, very, very weird. So those two cities just don't really like each other. My guess is... Actually, I don't know my guess. Maybe Avarice was the ally. Um, what was his name? That feller with the serpent hat, um, Apophis, was his... Uh, ally and then never really made peace after he decided to shuffle off this mortal coil mortal coil mm. my words are not doing as good as i expected them to do um but uh yeah that's probably why they're still whooping on cobble a little bit what can you do sometimes people are silly like that so we're gonna kill that pikeman for great justice get you in there for greater justice and move on with our lives we need money again and here I'm like, oh, really? Is that the only best route we have? But if we're going to try to avoid that side of the world, um, we're probably going to go to Lhasa instead. So, yep, we're going to go to Lhasa. It's not going to get us any signs, but the money's okay. 9.4 is pretty good. We're going to call that a win and just take that all the way to the bank. And yeah, really, you can see Ramsey's navy is getting beat up on in large part by... Um, by Cleo, which is nice. Like I said, that's keeping him off my back. And here's when we realize that, oh yeah, you know that plot that they said is probably incoming? It is really incoming, especially now that he took Thebes. Uh, Hatshepsut's really on her back at this point, kind of flattened out, gasping for breath. She's running out of cities, and the Garamantes are in an absolute tear, honestly, ripping through people. And here I'm like, yay, compass! I do want compass. Uh, I took that over physics because I do need to upgrade my triremes. Uh, and we're going to move this spy out of Pi Ramses for obvious reasons and get to um, the Narmer's capital, which I couldn't remember at the time. So I had to go check. And it's Thinis! So we're going to send our spy to Thinis and get as much science out of him. Because he's doing okay. He's not the lead um, like uh, Jala or Cleo. I think they're about even on tech, which is scary given how many more cities Jala has. So, huh, not so good. By the way, Ramses is plotting on you. If you didn't figure that out yet. The guy who's been trying to kill you for 20 generations is still trying to kill you. He's nothing if not consistent, but should be pretty obvious at this point. But at least we got some points with Jozer, who is still remarkably upright. You know, I mean, after getting whooped on by Ramses, you'd think that would be uh, the end of it. But, you know, we distracted Ramses by going for Kadesh, took some of his navy out of the picture. I mean, Cleo doubt him, so he hasn't really had the chance to go whole hog on Jozer yet. Unlike the Garamantes who have not been opposed by us in any way, or much of anyone else, honestly, and they can go absolutely bananas on every single neighbor they had, which they promptly did, and now we have a Garamantes problem. Uh, lots and lots of powerful cities that we can't really deal with, that are very, very near our borders, so, you know, I'm kind of hoping, and there we go, woo, hot ships have got our capital back! Ooh, yeah! Yeah, and we'll say, we'll not spy on you anymore, probably, uh, and go somewhere else, but, uh, Pai has declared war on Jala, so he's seeing the warmongering happen, and the Nubians, uh, honorable forebearers as they are, um, have decided to put him in his place just a little bit, lest he become an absolute threat to the uh, peace of the known world. Never fun when someone pushing, you know, I mean, way past double digits on cities is going on a conquering spree. That, my friends, is scary, and you never, ever, ever want to see that if you can avoid it. Because that shit nasty. Ugh. Anyway, but here we're trying to figure out what we can staff out, and we really can't work the university yet, so we're just going to keep doing that and growing as much as possible, while building as much as possible, so we can keep that population rising, and when we hit 10, then we're going to start working that university. Yeah, working in university is too early, it's going to cripple your city growth, it's never a good idea. And here again, the wonderful, wonderful game of what are we going to do with this damn worker? We're not sure. But we are going to have get our cash somehow. And the cargo ship, where can we go? Uh, again, we're checking, there's a new one. Uh, at the moment. I know, we're going to Kabul. So we're going to obviously revise that since that was mainly for the trade route benefit. Next good one is going to be from Kadesh to Memphis, da -da -da, and we're going to go to Meroe probably. Where were we going to go? Yeah, <laughs> I forgot too. Uh, Faras to Meroe, I think, yeah. So that's our next best one. And we got to look a little further north in Meroe. 
Here I'm trying to invoke the gods of Meroe to tell me where the hell the city is. And it's up there. There's the Nubian capital. 13 population in the north of the world. Keep looking, buddy. There we go. So, uh, Kerma to Meroe is what's going to happen uh, pretty much the next time we decide to send that trade right out. So, thanks for tuning into this post talk episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to have one more of these next, unfortunately, because I batch recorded two before I realized my microphone screwed up. So, I will see you next time as we continue the good fight and uh, try to recover the errors of recording that happened. Uh, I've been Erst Tuned. I'll see you then. Till then.